but where we need to study the skill representations and get something like a Jacobi truly type identity for the representations. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to discuss that part uh, uh, in this talk. And actually that part will be this uh, new part for the supersymmetry case. So it may be, it seems that uh, most, most of this part is just uh, uh, probably a repetition for the even case. Um, okay, so let us uh, start from recording some basics about the general uh, super algebra. So I'm going to work on the standard parity sequence. That means uh, this is the standard Borea algebra. That means I have uh, uh, for the for the indices, uh, the first m indices will be even, and uh, the last n indices will be odd. And I also introduce this si. So this will be m plus n numbers. The so first of them will be one. First m of them one, and then the last n of them will be negative one. And uh, they, they, this is the uh, least super algebra which is generated by uh, EIJ and with the following uh, super commutator relations, where the parity of EIJ is given by I plus J. So as usual, there is a vector representation. So it's it's given by the vector super space where it's all um is. Even space is CM and all the space is CN. And uh, you have this uh, matrix uh, units as usual, and you can define the module structure here. Um, so we are going to interest the, uh, we are interested in this studying the, the skill representations. So they, they correspond to the skill and diagrams. So suppose I have a partition. So I have a partition, then as usual, I will denote lambda prime as the conjugate of the partition. So for example, lambda one prime is just the, the number of non-zero parts of lambda. Then I'm going to take another partition, which is inside of the larger, <clears throat> the, the, the inside of the partition lambda. So it means it satisfies this condition. So if you consider the corresponding Young diagram, so mu is, is contained in, in lambda. Then we can consider the skill Yang diagram where you just, uh, for this Yang diagram lambda, you just remove the, the sub Yang diagram corresponding to mu. So you get a lambda slash mu. So my convention is the following. I will, I will write Yang diagrams as follows. For example, uh, uh, there are many, many boxes. So I will give each box a pair, a pair of two integers. For example, this one corresponds to one, one. And then the, the second one will be one, two, one, three, one, four. And this will be two, one, two, 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 three, and so on. Then uh, I will define the content for each box where for, for the box corresponding to the pair ij, then the content will be j minus i. For example, this, this content will be zero. This content here will be one. And uh, here this is two, this is three, and so on. Then for the diagonals, they all have the same that content content. So we also have this uh, uh, semi-standard Yang tableau. Okay, uh, no standard anymore, just the semi-standard Yang tableau. Um, the same uh, as there, there is, I just I don't use this standard Yang tableau. Sorry about that. So the semi-standard Yang tableau of the shape lambda slash mu is a skill Yang diagram. So as usual, you just insert many, many numbers. So those numbers are from one to n plus n. So in each box and satisfying the following usual condition, you require that uh, those numbers will be weakly increasing or known rows and columns. But for the even number, uh, the even indices, you require them to be strictly increasing along columns. For those odd, odd indices, you require them to be strictly increasing or known rows. And uh, for a semi-standard Yang tableau of shape lambda slash mu, so we denote uh, uh, Tij to be the number uh, inserted in the box represented by the pair uh, uh, Ij. So that will be the number in inside there. Okay. So we consider the uh, a particular uh, 
representations, those are the polynomial modules. So in general, the, the category of finite dimensional representations of the super algebra is not semi-simple. But if you consider the polynomial modules, this subcategory is, is semi-simple. So those are the modules which are sub-modules of the tensor power of the vector representations. So uh, those irreducible ones that are parameters by the partitions, again, by the, the M and hook partitions. So such hook partitions, it has an extra condition that is lambda m plus one should be no more than n. Um, so this is quite compatible with the, the, the even case. For example, if you put n to be zero, then it requires that m lambda m plus one must be zero. So it means this partition has, uh, has length at most m. Uh, in this general case, you can also think it in this way. So you, you can see this, this very large rectangular, and then this is the position. This is M and this is N. So this position is uh, M plus one, M plus one position. So the requirement is that uh, this box must be empty. So you can, you can have whatever this side or whatever here, but the, there's nothing there. So that's the probably that's the reason this is called the hook partition. Um, uh, for a hook partition, you can define a GIM weight. So it's, it's, it's given in such a way. So those numbers, uh, those num numbers are key, can be understood in the following way. So if you have partition, then for, for the first M rows, you just read through rows, but uh, starting from the the M plus one, you, you, you read from the, the columns. So the columns are from, starting from here. So this is M and this is N, for example. You read from this, this columns here and here and so on. So you don't, you don't, you don't consider the, you don't consider this, uh, considered as the ordinary way, just to consider the conjugate actually for, for the order part. So this is the uh, super analog of the sure wire duality. So for the symmetric group, you have uh, uh, the symmetric group action given by the super flip operator. So it satisfies this P V tensor W. Then when you interchange the order, you will have negative one to the V, the parent for V and parent for W, then you interchange. So you just have one more sign there. Okay, then the symmetric group, uh, the, the simple transposition, k, k plus one, then you just, uh, the, the action corresponds to this super flip operator acting on the k, case factor and the k plus first factor. And the, uh, the, the, the sure wild duality in this case is that the, the symmetric group action and the super algebra action, they can mute. And there is also multiplicity free decomposition. So in, in this case, the co-product of EIJ is again given by EIJ plus one and uh, tensor one, uh, tensor one. And plus one tensor EIJ. So the, here you don't have extra signs. The reason is because you, you have one here because you, you switch the position through the even elements, you don't create any uh, signs. Just like this case, if you have if you have even ones, then this is always one. Okay, here this multiplicity uh, free decomposition. Here this is the same uh, the irreducible module correspond for the symmetric group corresponding to the partition lambda, and this is the the one corresponding to the hook partitions for the GMM case. Okay, then we can define um, this skill representation. So at least for this moment, it's not a Younger module yet. This is just a GMN module. Uh, so let a lambda be a hooker partition, but this hooker partition is, is not for GMM, but for a larger D, D super algebra for this larger D super algebra, and then consider another hook partition. This is just the usual, usual partition with length at most k and is contained in this lambda. Then we consider the GLK module for this one. 
we can, uh, so for this module, this is the module, sorry, this is the module for this guy. So you can consider the lateral embedding of GLK inside of GLK plus M and this is a lateral embedding. And, and because of that, you can think this is, this is actually uh, also a module over GLK. So this is a module over GLK, then you can consider some a subset, um, a subspace spanned by the following vectors. Those are the vectors where they are singular, that's the highest uh, with vectors with respect to GLK, and the highest width will be um, mu later. So you just consider all those vectors, uh, then they span a subspace. This will be the, uh, it turns out there will be a younger module structure on there. That will be the skill representation we're going to discuss. So clearly by the definition, um, this, there is a, a centralizer, this centralizer module structure over it. And on the other hand, you can also consider GLMN, the embedding into the GLK plus M. And so where you have to shift the indices. So one need to shift the indices. So then you, you have this embedding. So I'm clearly, and the image of this guy commute, super commutes with this, this to be sub algebra. So you can also get a, 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 so a, a module structure for this guy over GLMN. So such a space, they have a basis parameters by the semi-standard Young tableau. So just like the just like the polynomial modules, they have a basis of parameters by the semi-standard Young tableau. Uh, but uh, it's a it has a basis of the following shape that because uh, you you fix the the GLK action basically it means you fix the the way how you are going to insert the numbers in the sub yang diagram mu because you have to make sure this is the highest weight so you can only put ones for the first row inside of this mu and twos in the second row and so on just that way so. So you don't have freedom for this sub yang diagram mu. So basically, you just uh, you, the only freedom you have is just uh, uh, for the skew skew yang diagram. You have to make sure this is a semi standard yang tableau. So this is there is a basis parameters by the semi standard yang tableau uh, tableaus of such shape. Okay, then let us record the. Definition of the super yangen. The super yangen is a is a unit uh, unit of associative super algebra so with some generators. So T i j to the R, where i j goes from one to n plus n and R goes from one to infinity. So we can put uh, the generators together to form a generating series. And then for each generating series, you put it to be the i j. Um, IJ entry of some matrix, then you get a generating matrix. So the relation is given by this RTT relation. So I will call those T's the RTT generators. So this RTT, this RTT presentation, uh, where R is the, the Yang R matrix, uh, where this is the identity matrix minus and the, the flip operator over U. So uh, uh, equivalently, those relations can also be written in the following way. So you just uh, make the equality on the corresponding coefficients. Okay, so those super youngins in general, uh, if, 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 we, if we consider those diagonal parts, they don't commute actually. They don't commute. In general, they don't commute. So you will not get something like a Cartan, like a sub-algebra. So instead, if one would like to get some Cartan sub-algebra, one would need to use the Dreamfield new generators. So the new Dreamfield new generators is obtained by the Gauss decomposition for this generating matrix. So for this uh, Gauss decomposition, what we do here is we write a T as F times D times E, where this F here is a, is a 
strictly lower triangular matrix, and D is diagonal. And E is strictly upper triangular. So for example, here is given by FGIU, the, the positions here in the middle is given by DKU. So those are the uh, diagonals and here is given by EIJU. Then uh, uh, in a different ways, uh, if you just uh, multiply it out, it corresponds to those relations. So those, those series are uniquely determined by, uh, by T's, by the RTT generators. And uh, the Cartan like sub algebra is generated by uh, the coefficients of all those series, which corresponds to the diagonal in the middle, the diagonal matrix in the middle. So we are going to define a Q character, a character theory based on this Cartan like sub algebra. This is sometimes people call it the Gelfand Zetlin sub algebra for the young game. Okay, so look at this particular form of DKU. So I'm going to consider the corresponding eigenvalue. So then the eigenvalue should look like, looks like, it looks like this, where it starts from one with some, uh, with, uh, it's a power series in U inverse and uh, starting from one. So we consider a, a tuple of such series, we call it a air weight. So, so this zeta one corresponds to the D1 action, zeta two corresponds to D2 action and so on. Um, then we consider the generalized air weight space. So unlike the this super algebra case in general, they, they are not diagonalizable anymore. So you will have Jordan block. So instead of considering the weight space, we consider generalized weight space. So we have to uh, add some further power here. So provided there exists some number so that this part will be zero. And this is called the air weight subspace or generalized air weight subspace. Then the character is given by the following, following formal summation. So usually because we are considering the finite dimensional, so this is a finite sum. So this is the, um, so here, this is a uh, Arbanian group where the corresponding multiplication just the multiply the corresponding series in, in that position. And uh, you can form a group ring for it. Then, then you define such an element in the group ring. So this is a dimension of the corresponding air weight space. This is uh, the one represented the air weight. So our, uh, one of our main goals is try to understand the time modules for the Yangen. So a Yangen module, which is time, it means uh, the joint action of all those Cartan like currents, they, they're semi-simple, which means it's diagonalizable. Um, another, another one is the, called the same. Same means it's diagonalizable and the, the joint spectra is also simple. So the, so the air with the space actually has dimension one. So it's also, it, it also means it must be diagonalizable. Okay, now we are ready to define the Yang module structure on this space, which we discussed before. So first we take the evaluation map. The evaluation map, uh, so this is the evaluation map at zero. So the, my evaluation parameter is zero. So, uh, so where the series uh, Tij goes to the following, that means uh, Tij one goes to Sieij, and uh, for the higher powers it goes to zero. So, so if if I have here r where r is greater than two or greater than or equal to two, then they all goes to zero. They all go to zero. And then uh, this is the evaluation map. And there's also a shift automorphism. Uh, using this shift automorphism, you can also get the evaluation map. So you just shift the spectral parameter to uh, from U to U minus Z. You can also get the evaluation map from uh, like this. This is the evaluation map at the par evaluation parameter Z. 
okay, just to change it in, in this way. And in this case, those higher powers will not be zero anymore. So we consider, uh, so suppose this is, this is the module, okay, so I didn't define it yet, but uh, suppose there is a young module structure, so then I will twist it back using, I will twist it a little bit using this shift automorphism. So for this, if I twist it a little bit, I'm going to use a slightly different notation. I will put the evaluation parameter here. So I will put, a, okay, this is mu. Then this evaluation parameter, I will put it here. Now let me, and let us discuss the young module structure here. So first uh, we have this embedding of the young using this dream field generators. So again, we have to shift the indices. And uh, we also regard this, the young corresponding to this, uh, this the algebra as a subalgebra use, use the later embedding, which, which means EIU goes to EIU and so on. This is just a later embedding. Uh, because in this case, in this case, we are talking about the, uh, because they are dream field generators. So it means um, when we are writing down the corresponding relations between each other, we have to use the Cartan matrix to, to get the relations. So uh, it, it means for, for this larger one, so here this is a GLK part and this is GLM M part. So they become mute, just like the, like the, the super algebra case, because this is a dream field generator, not the RTT generators anymore. So they can mute. And because they can mute, so if you use the, use the evaluation map, then you can figure out that uh, uh, this part and this part, they can mute. Now use the evaluation map, you, you can figure out this one. This one corresponds to the, U, the universal enveloping amplitude of GLK. And then because they can mute under the evaluation map, they still can mute. So you can figure out that this, this guy under the evaluation map is contained in here. And recall that this guy, this subspace is a module over this algebra, over this centralizer. So use this map, you can get a, a young module structure. Here I have some extra shift. Tau k is just uh, for some, some special purpose. This tau k is not uh, actually very important here. So such a such a construction is due to Schrodinger uh, for the uh, for the even case. So it can also be generalized directly for the super case. So our first result is the Q character uh, for the skill representation. So to get the Q character of the skill representation, we uh, we define such a such a affine weight. This is a affine weight. So you can think it is a fine allelog of, of epsilon i. It's a fine allelog of epsilon i. So they're not simple rules. Um, so here I have some extra power si due to the super symmetric case. Then I also have some shift. So those shifts are, are, are some particular shifts uh, corresponding to the uh, some, okay, so it's, correspond to the quantum determinant or quantum Brazilian something related to that so, so for some special purpose. Okay, then this is a refinement of the previous statement that it has an eigenbasis, um, it has a basis parametrized by the skew Yang diagram. So that means um, the Q character can be computed, can be described explicitly using so all kinds of semi-standard Yang tableau of this, this shape. So for each such semi-standard Yang tableau, you can construct a, such a monomer. Yeah, in this monomer, so there are two things which are important. The first one is the number which is inserted in that box. And the other one is the content of that box. So in, in the super algebra case, what we, we do is you, you don't consider the content. So, but for the Yang case or quantum affine, super uh, quantum affine case, you have to consider this 
the content of the corresponding box as well. And this is a, a new sum which will be uh, discussed for, for the quantum groups. And in particular, one can show that uh, uh, this module is same because, because you, can, you can figure out that uh, all those monomials that are different, that are distinct with respect to each other. Now we are ready to formulate the result. Uh, so I'm interested in, this is the Jacobi Trudy identity. It's just a very similar to the Jacobi Trudy identity for the sure polynomials. Okay, and uh, uh, so let us, let the SK be the Q character of uh, the representation corresponding to a row of K boxes and the AK will be the Q character um, for the representation corresponding to a column of K boxes, a column of K boxes. Then this is the, very similar to the usual uh, Jacobi Trudy identity, we have the following, except that we have some shift. We have some shift here. So those shift uh, comes from the following. Those shift comes from the following. Suppose I have a skew yang diagram, for example, like this. So those book, those numbers correspond to the content of the content of the first box of each row. The, 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 content, the content of the first box for each row. A similar story, those, those shifts, they correspond to the uh, first number if I'm going to consider the, 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 the content of the first box for each column. So those, are, those are the meaning of these shifts. Okay, and uh, uh, so we wanted to study further uh, skill representations. First, uh, uh, the, those representations, they are nice because everything can be computed explicitly and uh, the, the we are understood for the even case. So uh, one question we can ask is, um, what kind of uh, properties if we obtain it uh, from the uh, even case, can we, also generalize it to the simple case. So if, if we can do it, can we do it in some, uh, without the repeat everything again, and just uh, try to understand it using some, uh, uh, some general philosophy, general idea. So the, it turns out uh, one way to do that is, is to use the dream field functor. So of course it does not uh, solve anything, it just uh, it solves part of the story. So some, some Something, some properties from the even case can be generalized to the simple case. So let me first remind you what is the dream field functor. So the dream field functor is a functor which maps the modules of the degenerate of fan Hecke algebra to the modules of the Yangian. So uh, the Hecke algebra is generated by the following generators. So those sigmas, you can think of them, they are generators for the symmetric group. And those x, they're just some polynomial, uh, generators for some polynomial ring. And the, together they satisfy further conditions. Okay, then this is the degenerate of fan Hecke algebra. So there is a, a one dimensional sub representation for this degenerate of fan Hecke algebra defined by the following way. So this is it's generated by such a vector. And then the actions is, uh, for the generators is given by the following formula. This is a one dimensional module. So we can use this one dimensional module to get some more advanced, more complicated modules by using the induction product. Okay, before that, let me, um, let me uh, introduce some new subset. So this is, this is the weight, the lambda is a weight. This is a weight for GL capital N. So it has nothing to do with the super algebra GL MN. Okay, this is just a, another indices, capital N. Then we define, we define the weight space and this set, this set is 
is a, is a set of uh, GLN with mu such that lambda minus mu is a weight. It's a weight for this space. It's just a weight for this representation. Uh, take it another way. That means uh, every time if I put a lambda i to be lambda epsilon i, mu to be mu epsilon i, then, then the requirement is that Li must be a non-negative integer. And moreover, L1 plus L2 until L capital N should be exactly L. Okay, then one can define the, this is the following module, which is usually called the standard modules. This is the the, the induction more, um, module of from this one dimensional module, tensor product of one dimensional module. So this is the this is the one dimensional module for this uh, degenerate of fine Hecke algebra with the from this is the HL1, this is HL2, and so on, HLN. So where you identify, sorry. Uh, where you identify uh, this one as a sub-algebra here with the indices, with the usual indices. But for this one, if you want to identify as a sub-algebra, then you have to shift the indices by L1 and so on. So this is very similar to the induction product uh, as the symmetric group. So you can cons consider this induced, uh, induced uh, uh, product for this one-dimensional module. So it turns out um, those are place something like a Verma module uh, for the degenerate of fan Hecke algebra. So as a, a, a symmetry group module, so it has the following decomposition, where uh, this, is, uh, this is, you can consider this guy as the leading, leading term. This is the module which corresponds to the leading term. And then there, there are some, some modules for the rest and with the following order. This is the order for the dominance order for the partitions. And the, the multiplicity for this module is one. So let me explain what, what is, is this partition. This partition is just uh, obtained from uh, the all, and the, such a sequence, you just arrange it into the decreasing order, you will get a partition. This partition I will denote it by, by new lambda mu. This is just that you re rearrange all those errors. So the, the, the statement is that when lambda is dominant, so here dominant means uh, it's not the, the one correspond to the non-negative integers, it just corresponds to they're not equal to negative integers. So this is, this is the meaning for the dominant. And then this module is generated by such a subspace over the, the, the algebra. And it also has an irreducible quotient. For this irreducible quotient, uh, so this is the, the object we are going to study. So we want to understand uh, Greenfield, under Greenfield factor, so this module corresponds to which one, which representation, and it turns out that it will be a re skill representation. So this irreducible quotient corresponds to a skill representation. Okay, now let us define the dream field functor. Uh, suppose M is a, is a Ophan Hecker, degenerate Ophan Hecker algebra module, then I can consider this tensor product. Those are the tensor product of vector representations. And this is, there is a Young module structure. Roughly speaking, you can think it as follows. So you can, you can think, you can just think about this is the tensor product of vector representations with a bunch of evaluation parameters. For example, this is V tensor V, tensor V, where here the evaluation parameter is X1. Here this is X2, Xn. So recall that those X, they are generators of the degenerate of fine Hecke algebra. So this, this is not a, a very precise, not rigorous, just a way to think about it. And then one, when you use this action, you will get some x. Then you will use this x acting on this uh, the, the m part. So that's how do you understand such a Young module structure? Uh, then 
we also have this nature um, symmetric group action. So here, sigma i corresponds sigma, and uh, then uh, sigma i then permute those those vector representations. Then one can define a new a new space. This is denoted by DLMN. So here M means the corresponds to HL here, and MN means this will be a representation for the Young and GLMN. Uh, then it's defined as follows. It will be this quotient, such a quotient. So first, uh, this is a Young module. And then one can show um, the summation of such an image will be again a Young module. Then take such a quotient, you will get a, a, another Young module. So it means if you take a degenerate or fan Hecke algebra module, then you will get a, a Young module. So this, this functor will call it the Greenfield. A dream field functor. So this dream field functor that has several properties. First is the exact functor, and second, um, one has the following. Uh, following. So if M is has the following decomposition, then you are you can also know that D uh, under the dream field functor, what is the corresponding decomposition as the GLMN modules. So this is for GLMN modules, and this is for. Uh, uh, the symmetric group modules. So here, this is lambda. Uh, this is a new prime. The reason is, and this is new because I'm using plus here. If I change it to minus, then this is just the, the usual. This is just a new. And uh, under this stream field functor, the induction product becomes the tensor product. Okay. Under the gene field functor, many uh, results from the e can be generalized to the super case. Okay. Um, first, uh, uh, there is a, the gene field functor is the equivalence of two categories. So it's the equivalence of two categories under the following condition. Error is less than n. Error is less than n. So where uh, the n corresponds to the, the Young SL and not a GLMN we discussed before. This is a, a, the even Young So we are, uh, this is the category of finite dimensional modules of the HEC algebra, of finite HEC algebra, degenerate one. And this is the category of the finite dimensional Young modules whose irreducible components when restricted as SN module are uh, submodules of the tensor power of vector representations. Then under this, under this condition, this is the equivalence of two categories. Okay, and uh, there is one more proposition which is important is that, and uh, the dream field functor maps irreducible modules to irreducible modules. So. Uh, this is this was done for by Arakawa for the even case, and then or then done by Nazara for the Yangen of query super algebra. So here we can adopt uh, Lazarov's method to prove it for GLM as well. So uh, because of this proposition, what we can do is the following. So suppose I have some result for the for the even case. Then, because this is the equivalence of two categories, this is the equivalence of two categories, so I can, I can do it back. So I can use the inverse, so I can get some result. So first it was for SLN. So I apply the inverse because this is the equivalence of two categories. So I can get the corresponding result for the degenerate of fan Hecke algebra. Then I can apply it once more. So, but uh, for for this case, then I will get some result for this Young of GLMN case. So of course, it does not cover everything. It 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 all only involves the irreducibility. But one more thing we can say is because this is also an exact functor. So if you get some equalities in the gratinic ring of the category of representation theory, you can also get the corresponding statement for the super case. 
This is also true. So the two sides first, uh, in reducibilities or the corresponding equalities, so you can also generalize it. For example, for example, uh, one thing we can show is we can show that under this uh, under uh, and the string field factor, this irreducible module of the Hick algebra corresponds to the skill representation. So, but with this, with this extra condition, lambda mu has to be partitions. So, in general, this, uh, I, in general, they, they don't correspond. They correspond to some module, but I don't know what is it. The reason is, uh, for the super case, it's very difficult to compute uh, something. So, unlike the even case, in the even case. You can always compute the highest air weight, which determines this irreducible objects uniquely. But for the super case, there's some some difficulties to compute the compute the uh, the highest air weight because because for example, one way to understand it is because here because this is a new new prime, but this is new. You may have some situation like uh, this is this is the hook. This is New prime itself is not a hook partition, but new may be a hook partition. So under such a transformation, so such that there are some modules which may be the leading term here, but uh, when you do this dream field functor and get it here, this module may be zero. So it's not uh, the, the highest with anymore. So there are some difficulties for here to 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 compute uh, such a highest air weight. But uh, nevertheless, Based on this logic, which I uh, I discussed before, so for example, you can use the Jacobi truly identity, the Jacobi truly identity, which I I discussed before, to show to show uh, this is exactly the module we're discussing. So they're they're isomorphic, and in particular, we get that this this representation is irreducible. For example. Because because this is irreducible and because of this, this the first statement here, okay. And based on this philosophy, many results can be generalized to the super case. For example, um, in the even case, it's known that if I take the uh, the tensor product of skill representations, and with with the evaluation parameters in different cos uh, z cosets, then this is the irreducible one. So under the same philo uh, philosophy, so first uh, I, I put it back. So you, you know here that first I consider the result for Yang gain of GLN or Yang gain of SLN. So it does not really matter. Uh, this is SL, this is GL. It does not really matter. If you look at here, the, the condition does not uh, rely on this N here at all. So you can make N to be very, very large and you, can still, you still have such a result. And because n is very large, you know this will be a equivalence of two categories. So, and then you you know that uh, the corresponding the corresponding there is a module irreducible module in the degenerate of fan Hick algebra corresponding to this guy. Now you, you use the dream field functor and use it apply the back, so you will get the corresponding result for the super case. So that's the that's the idea. So and. Uh, uh, for, this is one example, and uh, another example. For example, this this is slightly different, which we may be more interesting. Is uh, for example, in the even case, you can discuss the tensor product of two evaluation modules. So those are the evaluation modules, not the skew representations. So it means just a, a skew, just a Yang diagram, not skew Yang diagram. So then uh, the result of by module shows that those two guys is irreducible if and only if. So this is a sufficient and necessary condition. So if and only if those are true, so let me slightly explain it. So this is a subset, subset of Z uh, or subset of, uh, of C. So where it's defined as follows, you take the all consecutive integers from AJ to AI. And then you exclude all those particular numbers aj, aj plus one ai. So here they are consecutive, but here they may not be consecutive. So you will get some subset. 
the, uh, in some sense, in, in some special case, they may also be empty. And then either this case is true or this is case true for all IJ. So it may happen that sometimes this part is true, sometimes this part is true. This is, this is also possible. Okay, so for example, you know this is true and this condition actually does not depend on N. So, so you can just remove this N here, this thing is still defined. And so you can just make N to be very large. So you, you, you use this equivalence of two categories, so you get the corresponding result for the degenerate of fine hair cathedral, and then you bring it back to the super yang game. So you will get that if this is true, if this is true, then the corresponding yang game for the super case is also irreducible. However, it would not give you a necessary condition. The reason is previously I can assume n to be sufficiently large, but for this case, my small m and n are fixed. I cannot change it anymore. So I don't have such a equivalence of two categories for, for, for this part. I only have it for the even case. So that means if I apply it, I just get some sufficient conditions. So if this condition is still true, I can figure out that the, those modules, the tensor product for the super yang game is still irreducible. But then that may be, this is not a necessary condition. Let us just look at the example as follows. So a, a very simple example is just, you can look at the GR1 and it's GR1 and GR2. So for GR2, uh, those two guys the, is irreducible if and only if the difference of the evaluation parameters will not be plus one or minus one plus two or minus two. And but for GR11 case, so this module, so the different spaces, the different spaces over different algebras. But then this case is irreducible if and only if it's, it's not equal to plus or minus two. So this, this explains why this is not a, a sufficient, not, not a necessary condition. So, so, uh, uh, so one question is maybe to ask is, what uh, is the necessary and sufficient condition for the super case of this one? And what if I change those two guys to skill representations? So this is uh, still open even for the uh, even case. Okay, uh, another thing which I want to discuss is the extended T system. For example, this is where we, we use this. Uh, this is the exact functor. Um, so the, uh, I will explain this extended T system using the normal T system. So I can say that, okay, I don't know how to say this. I would just call it the omega. So this is a Yang diagram. And I can say the prime Yang diag diagrams, that means I'm not going to consider a Yang diagram of such a case because you can cut it here and uh, then it becomes two different uh, species and uh, they intersect at, at the most one point. So I don't want to consider such a situation. I also don't want to consider such a situation because they're, they're, they're not connected. So I want to consider uh, some prime Yang diagrams. So for example, I can consider rectangular so this is my, my original omega. Now let me define omega plus and omega minus and omega zero and all, all these guys involved here. Okay. So for example, omega plus means I just consider this sub, sub part. So it means I just remove the leftmost column. I just remove the leftmost column. Then for omega minus, I just remove the rightmost column. Then what is omega zero? Omega zero is just the, the middle. I just remove those two columns. Okay, now um, uh, I can define x omega and y omega. To define it, I have to slightly change it. So I will consider this, this part so this part, this, uh, this part, this is the omega plus. Recall that this is the omega plus. What I do is I shift it. I shift it with respect to this diagonal to here. 
then I will get a new, I will get a new rectangle. Now what is what is what is x omega? X omega is just the union of of this new omega plus and uh, the old uh, omega minus. You take the union of this new omega plus. New omega plus means the one which you shifted. So previously it was this one. Now I shifted to here, just shifted by one unit. Then x omega is just the, the union of those two. And then y omega is the intersection of those two, the intersection of those two. Then such a such a equality is, is true in, in the gratinic ring. And the moreover, uh, those guys, they are irreducible. So this guy corresponds to an irreducible one, and this guy also corresponds to an irreducible one. And if you suppose further that, if you suppose further that this is not a prime, it's not a prime uh, skew yang diagram, you can still do such thing. You can still do such thing, but then in this case, they are irreducibles and they're isomorphic. So basically it means this guy will be just a, a zero. Okay, so the, the usual T system is just the case which I discussed. You just take a rectangle, a Yang diagram corresponding to the rectangle. But it, all, it also works for any, any prime skew Yang diagram. So you just do the same procedure. Okay, so uh, finally, uh, let me discuss uh, a few things. First, uh, we're interested in the uh, the, the the skill representation because everything can be computed explicitly. For example, you can compute the, the matrix element of all those generating series, for example, EIU, FIU as well. You can compute all those things. Another one is, um, is to try to understand the, 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 the time modules here, the time modules. Um, because in the even case, it turns out that all the finite dimensional irreducible time modules, they are just a tensor product of skew representations. So those ones are the building blocks of the time modules. So one may ask a question, what about the, the classification in the simple case? And uh, the answer is not given by the same answer anymore, because first of all, there are many time modules with non-integral weights, because this is a simple case, you, you may have non-integral weights that are still finite dimensional. And uh, even you add some restrictions, for example, you require, you require uh, uh, not all modules, you just consider those younger modules who is tame and is, is irreducible components when restricted as some GLM modules, they're just a polynomial modules, is still not true. The, it's still not a, a, a tensor product of skill representations. You, one can find some counter examples. So this case becomes to be more interested in for the simple case. And the answer is not known yet. Another one is uh, one would expect that tame and same, they are the same thing. Basically they're the same thing. So recall that tame means it's diagonalizable. Same means it's di not only diagonalizable, but also has simple spectrum. So this was shown for, for the even case and also for quantum of fan case of type B. So uh, for the generally simple case, I don't know the answer yet, but at least for G11 case is true. So, so uh, I will just discuss one more slide. So why, uh, what happens for G11 case? Uh, in G11 case, uh, any irreducible module, so it has a pair of two such power series it turns out the irreducibles in this case is finite dimensional if and only if the ratio of those two series will be a rational function. So in, this is a rational function. So all those two guys, those two guys they are polynomials of the same degree and they are modular polynomials. And we can, we can assume further they are relatively prime because you can cancel common factors then if the degree of this guy is k, then you can figure out that the, uh, the dimension of this irreducible module will be two to the power k. And in this case, the module is same if and only if it is 10, if and only if phi 
has no multiple roots. That's the statement. And one thing which I would like to say is this is not a different from the, uh, this is quite a different from the even case. Uh, the time depends on the choice of your Borey subalgebra because the Borey subalgebra is not isomorphic to each, uh, uh, conjugate to each other. So it depends on the Borey subalgebra. For example, if I, here I got it is uh, because I'm using the parity sequence one minus one. If I change it, so minus one to one, then instead of considering this polynomial, I have to consider this one. So it means if I take another Borey subalgebra, then it's time if and only if Posi has no multiple roots. Okay. Okay, so I will stop here. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Kang. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions for Kang? Feel free to unmute yourself and just ask your question. Okay, if there are no questions for Kang, let's thank our speaker again. Okay, thank you. Thank Kang. you. Yeah, thank you. And if you if you are comfortable sharing your slides, please uh, send them to me by email. And if you'd rather not, that's totally fine, of course. Mm -hmm. Let me okay. pause the recording.